I'm Terry Hemmert, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football! Forget about Monday Night Football! There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug! Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about that! Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're here for part four at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare for the Fest for Beatle Fans. 2022. It's been an amazing time here at the festival and you won't want to miss this final episode with more music, more with Liverpool, more with our guests who are here, Lawrence Juber and so many others. Uh, this has been a wonderful festival. I want to thank Mark Lapidus who uh, will be with us and he is the coordinator of the whole festival and everyone who put it together so stay with us here for part, part four of the fest for beetle fans 2022 on taped with rabbi doug
I'm Mickey Dolans here at Beetle Fest, and you're watching Tape with Rabbi Doug. here on Taped with Larry Doug at Beetlefest 22 and I'm here with Patty Gallo Stedman. Uh, she is the author of the book Diary, Diary of a Beetle Maniac. You know a lot of people who are Beatles fans and are very uh, staunch Beatles fans call themselves Beetle Maniac. What made your diary special and what made you decide to write a book about it? 
Well, I was 13 in 1963, and I kept a diary like a lot of young girls did back then. And when Beatlemania hit in 64, I just continued my diary with a lot of entries about the Beatles. And uh, I also I had a fan club that year for a famous actor who was in all the Beatle movies named Victor Spinetti. Uh -huh. and, and so there's a lot of entries about Victor and the fun things we did and going up to New York to see him and things of that sort. Um, I was very lucky because uh, I liked to write and I did a little column for our local newspaper back then in the day about music and fashion. So all of this is actually in the book. Uh, which is kind of funny, it's, and I was a journalist by profession for many decades. I worked for newspapers and magazines. Very nice, very nice. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show. Much success with your book, thank you. uh, Diary yep. of a Beetle Maniac. <laughs> this is Patty Gallo Stenman, and stay with us here on Tapes with Rabbi Doug. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. here at the Festival Beetle Fans 22 and I'm here with Jay Bergen. He is the author of Lennon, Mobster, The Mobster, and The Lawyer and uh, you had so much uh, connection to John Lennon over, over a period of time and I loved your interview with uh, Tom Frangione. Fantastic. Jay, your, your new book um, is a really great study without burying itself, obviously, in, in legalese and actually getting out of it and making it a story about this song and how John was defending his art 
and how John was actually very much, you know, in a, in a position where he wanted to take control of the commercial, not just the commercial, but the creative process. And the song that we heard there, Come Together, you guys you know, probably know from some of the books and what you've heard, um, you know, because of the Here Come Old Flat Top, and um, the publisher of that song, of, of Chuck Cherry's You Can't Catch Me, was a guy named Morris Levy. And um, one, of, one of my great, uh, one of the great answers we ever got on the Fab Forum was when we had Jay uh, as our guest, and I said, boy, you know, Morris Levy, you know, he was really a thuggish, I said, it almost sounds like he was the, the prototype for Hesh on The Sopranos. And he was. Yeah. Apparently, he was. Yeah. Every day, right, right, including that Morris had a, uh, a horse farm up in Yen, New York, and so did Hesh. Yeah, and he would, you know, add his name to songs so that he could get a slice of the publishing. And, um, you know, the deal that got struck was that John was to have um, recorded three of Levy's uh, songs from his catalog so that they could get the publishing on his next album. And a lot's gonna hinge on that time, his next album. But before we talk about him, you know, having to record those songs with his next album, it's something that puzzled me for years, and I'm sure has puzzled some other people. The song Come Together, when you look at the album or the sheet music, says written by Lennon and McCartney. Now we know they wrote a lot separately, and we know, you know Paul even just told the story, John brought this song to us. But if Paul's getting half the publishing as a co-writer on that song, how is it that he escaped having to go through this, unlike John did? Well, I think it was principally because uh, John was in New York, was living in New York, Morris could serve him with the uh, complaint, summons and complaint, uh, and, uh, and actually the case was started, I think, before uh, John and Yoko moved to New York in 1971, because the case was started uh, in 1970, but once, once uh, John got to New York, that's why he was involved. Right. And, and I want to say one thing back about what you were saying about putting his name on songs. One of the songs, if you look it up, Yaya, the Lee Dorsey hit, you will see that Morris Levy is one of the writers. And he didn't know any more about writing a song than I do. Yeah, and it's funny, we're gonna talk about some of the guys that got uh, you know, called up as witnesses and there's some of the musicians on the album who who kind of put that whole songwriting thing into layman's terms. It's some of the funniest stuff in the book. You know, when, uh, when Levy is saying, I provided the charts and the sheet music, and they were saying, you know, you really don't need, you know, charts to play Tutti Frutti. <laughs> that, was, that was Jesse Ed Davis. Yeah. So let's talk about, about how you end up, um, you know, representing John and getting on his radar. As we said, you know, the, the settlement is going to be such that John has to record three of Levy's published songs on his next album. But as we know, you know, John went out west when he was separated from Yoko. Um, he records part of the rock and roll album. That gets put on hold. He records Walls and Bridges and then returns to rock and roll. So the issue of the songs needing to be on his next album becomes far from a moot point, does it not? No, it, it became a, a critical point because Morris Levy wanted to know why uh, it wasn't on his next album, and yet Morris knew, knew that uh, the next album uh, could not be Walls and Bridges because that was all John's own material that he wrote. Uh, so that was part of his drift uh, to get a meeting with, uh, with John that uh, I want to hear the story from John, why the rock and roll album, the oldies album, got delayed. Right, and it, it Phil, Phil Spector had disappeared with tapes, and he had his car accident, and, and the whole thing gets shelved, so John continues to work. And I think one of the real messages that you can derive from your book by putting that timeline together is, what's that period known as when John's out west? The Lost Weekend. Yeah. 
He was never more busy in his life. Tell me, um, what is your favorite story of all the stories you've told? What's your favorite story of your connection with John Lennon? What interaction with him was the one that really stands out the most for you? One of them, Rabbi, when John and I were walking up to family one day, he walked in there. I wanted to stay in New York. We're walking up the Avenue, and we're right near the Plaza Hotel, and all of a sudden, the joint stopped. They're turning around, and it's just a bit old. And there were these two or six or seven people in the back of us. And you can imagine. He walked over to them, and he said, I don't know how he knew it. He walked over, and he said, very politely, you've been following me. What do you want? And a couple of them said, by the way, you want a And he said, okay, I'll give each of you an order to do that, and then you stop following me. So we stood and we come to the district. So I take your name. I gave you the positive story. Yes, I gave one of them an order. I thanked them. And then so much. John was very polite to his fans. Well, I know the university. February of 75, so the case was over. I had a lot of different views. He was just trying to be John Ryan. Don't get it. I have a friend. Not the wrong New York. Major Mark. He just wanted to be here. He loved New York. He does his show about the We went to dinner. We went to lunch in Branson. He was And he was also just a great witness. He was a dedicated I think this was, again, not a and it's just not just a great experience for so case, even Yoko, when came to the trial, 20 days spread over January, March, or April, even on days when he didn't know it, because they were really prejudiced to this case, and I think they wanted the judge to understand how committed they were. I would have been better at you know, really wanted to end to a colleague and Very nice, very nice. Well, this is the untold story. Lennon, the mobster, and the lawyer. Um, this is Jay Bergen. Jay, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for coming to Chicago to be at the fest. I wish you much success with the book. If you want more information about it, email me, info at tvrabbi.com. I'll forward it to him. He'll send you that information. And uh, we'll stay with us here at the Fest for Beetle Fans 22 Beetle Fest here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Well, that's it here at the Fest for Beatles Fans 2022 in Chicago. And I am here with Mark Lapidus, the proprietor of the Fest for Beatles Fans. Mark, welcome back. And you, Doug. welcome back to Chicago. Three years, it's a long time. It has been a long, cold, lonely three years. And we are so glad to be back to our live fest this weekend. We've had lots of people here. People it, it, it was beautiful. Years. It was beautiful, and some of our favorite people are back here today, and a few new people. Peter it's been Asher, a lot of fun. A lot Billy of fun. J. Kramer, Greg Bissonette, Ringo's drummer has never been here. Oh, he's new. He's he new. He's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, Lawrence Struber. A new fill-in bass player who is tremendous playing while uh, Glenn is ill, and uh, it's just it's been a fun a fun event. Um, tell me, compared to being back in New York before you came here. Would you say that the uh, excitement in the crowds are the same in New York as in Chicago or different? I think Chicago's a little more uh, boisterous. Uh -huh. Very good. Because they come from all over the country, and New York is, New Jersey, mainly the East Coast, the East Coast. Uh -huh. Here we got people from 32 states, right. England, Canada, right. Mexico, Very true. Very Puerto true. Rico, that people from. Very nice. So, three years we didn't have a festival, we had an online thing in between. Yes. But what number of festival is this actually in a location? 40, not in this hotel? No, no, all together between... Well, we started in 77, so it's 40, this would have been the 46th, so it's 44th. 44th. Missing last two. Uh-huh. And uh, along with that, uh, how many uh, different festivals in Chicago itself is it? There's a 44th in Chicago. So how about how about all over the country that you've been? Hundred. That's what I was saying. 132. 132. Can you imagine? No. 132 times you have brought together the fans 
around the world to celebrate the Beatles. It's an amazing thing and an amazing feat on your part. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very and proud of it. Love this is uh, the first fest in Chicago where you have a grandchild here as well. Yeah, that's right. Skylo. Skylo. Congratulations, it's, 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 Grandpa. It's, it's, it's beautiful. One year old and adorable, adorable. Adorable. And he looks like he's having a good time. Yeah, I see. He's having a great time. Yeah, he's, he's having a great time. We're just waiting, watch for him. I, I predicted he might take his first steps. I want to tell you... <laughs> but it's okay, whenever he's any, ready. Any day he's ready. Right. Uh, I, I want to tell you um, my personal um, uh, favorite first-time person to have on today yeah. was um, Tom Frangione. Tom, Tom Frangione. Years I know, I know, but it's the first time he's been on the show with me. I've heard oh, him on okay. stage. Okay. Um, such a nice guy. Yeah. He actually... Uh, <laughs> I always love his interviews. I've known him for 40 years. You've known him for 40 years. Wow. He used to win the satellite contest, the, the, look, the trivia contest every year. Wow. So we wow. said, okay, you, why don't you come write trivia questions instead of answering because you, you win yeah. every year. So he right? does on us there. So, so today was the first time I've had him on my show okay. and, uh, here at the fest. And I, I listened to him do his interviews today. And now I know him very well because I listen to him on XM Radio on Sirius XM. Yep. So uh, it really is He's great to have. Shows. It's great to have a, a Beatles expert here who you can hear outside of here all through all the year, the all, all around the world, all around the world. Well, I want to wish you much success. Thank you very much. Future festivals. I want to thank all of you for being with us here on Tape with Rabbi Doug and here at the Fest for Beatles Fans 22 in Chicago. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former festivals on the web. And if you want to send Mark or anybody in the festival an email, I will forward it to them, info at tvrabbi.com. Hope to see you next time and next year right here, same weekend, August 11th, 12th, and 13th. Right here in Chicago in Rosemont. Right here, no. and, oh, yeah. and we hope to see you next time right here on Take with Rabbi Doug. Shalom. Peace and love. Shalom. Gonna see you, Rabbi Doug. Gonna see you, Rabbi Doug. Gonna see you, Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a taped with Rabbi Doug production.